that we have another thin film example problem. So we have a soap bubble floating in air. Soap bubbles are thin films sandwiched on either side by air, something with an index of refraction of one. And so our soap bubble floating in the air has a thickness of 400 nanometers. So we've got our gnomes here. We already know T is equal to 400 nanometers. Okay. The index of refraction of the soap bubble film, so that's this material, that's our thin film, the index of refraction of that material is 1.36. So N2 is equal to 1.36 N2 because that's our material sandwiched on either side by air. So that means that N3 is equal to 1, N1 is equal to 1. Those are the mediums on either side of my thin film, which just happens to be air. Okay, so we can say N1 is equal to N3 equals 1. What incident wavelength, so what wavelength we're looking for, will result in the first constructive interference, first constructive interference in the reflected light? Okay, what wavelength for the first constructive interference? Now, to think about uh, which equation we're going to use for constructive interference here, we need to think about our index of refractions and our thin film truth table, okay? So, uh, well, we think about our um, thin films as they are here. We already see that N2 is greater than N1, and we also see that N2 is greater than N3. So in our truth table, the first column asks, is N2 greater than N1? And so for us, that is true. The second column asks, is N3 greater than N2? And for us, it's not actually, we have N3 is less than N2. So that column for us is going to be false. Um, N3 is not greater than N2. So when we look at our thin film truth table, we're going to choose the row for which N2 is greater than N1 is true, and which N3 is greater than N2 is false. Okay, and that tells us for constructive interference, which is what we're looking for, we're going to use the equation 2t, or t is the thickness of our film, equals m minus one half times a lambda sub n. Okay, so remember that lambda sub n is equal to the wavelength of light incident on the film, so that's the wavelength of light before it enters the film, divided by the index of refraction. Okay, so we're looking for this um, wavelength that we need, the incident wavelength, which is the wavelength of light outside the bubble. Okay, so here where we see lambda n, we're gonna replace that with a lambda over n. So this is equal to m minus one half times lambda divided by n. And m, this m here, is going to be 1 because we're looking for the first constructive interference. That's 2t. Okay, so um, we've got to solve this equation for lambda. We've got 2t is equal to, so this marker is running out, 2t is equal to 1 minus 1 half is just 1 half times lambda over n. Okay, so now we multiply, because we're trying to solve for lambda here, we have to multiply both sides by 2. So when we do that, we get rid of that. Multiply both sides by 2. So 4t is equal to lambda over n. Now we solve this for lambda. 
lambda, the wavelength of light incident on the film, is equal to 4 times the thickness of our film times the index of refraction of the film. Okay. So this is equal to 4. Our thickness of our film is given in nanometers. We've got 400 nanometers times the index of refraction of our film, 1.36. So that tells me that the wavelength of light that will result in the first constructive interference in the reflected light is going to equal 2.1. 176 times 10 to the 3 nanometers, or 2,176 nanometers. Okay, now, this wavelength of light is not in the visible. We would not be able to see this wavelength of, our, of light with our eyes, okay? Because for visible wavelengths of light, visible light, the wavelength of that light is between 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. So we wouldn't be able to see that wavelength of light with our human eyes, but other detectors might be able to detect it. Okay, so this problem is very similar to a workbook problem that you're going to work through. You're going to do a very similar problem, but you're going to be asked to find the um, what incident wavelength in the visible spectrum will result in constructive interference in the reflected light. So here we used m equals 1 for our first constructive interference, and we got this wavelength of light that is way too long for our eyes to be able to see. Okay, so you could find a wavelength of light in the visible that would result in constructive uh, reflection from this thin film by going through and seeing, okay, what happens if I think about m equals 2 in this equation, which would be um, my second constructive interference? What if I tried m equals 3? That would be my third constructive interference. m equals 4, my fourth constructive interference. Do this uh, problem, but try different values of m, different values for the order of the constructive interference until you find one that's in the visible wavelength of light.